All right, so if you're in the, the six figure mark, whether it's the low six figures, mid six figures, high six figures, and you're trying to add an extra comma to your revenue, well, the truth of the matter is that what got you here won't get you there. And I learned that from the very first director of operations that I hired, right? The things that got you to this position in your business are probably not the things that are gonna take you to the next threshold in your business. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this training is what needs to take place in your business to take you from that six, maybe even high six figure mark to the seven figures, eight figures and beyond. So thing number one that I would recommend is a team. Right. It is probably going to be, if you haven't already, it is going to be become imperative that you begin to hire a team. Specifically, even when I was in a mm, couple hundred thousand dollars a year in earnings as just an affiliate marketer, I still had a couple of outsourcers that I handed off some of my workflow to, right? So let's talk about what you would hand off to that team. You may or may not be for, familiar with the Pareto principle, right? which basically states that 80% of the, the things that we do generate nothing and 20% of what we do generates almost 80% of our results, right? So 20%, the 80-20 principle, it's also known as, right? 20% of what, only about 20% of what we do actually generates 80% of the result that we're creating, right? And the very first things that you wanna to start to hand off are the 80% of things that you're doing that aren't adding any additional revenue, that aren't necessarily um, adding any additional value to your business. So as an example, let's say that you, if you started out as a marketer, there's probably really only two things that you're doing that are generating revenue for you. That's gonna be emailing your list and advertising. That's it, right? When I was an affiliate marketer, there's only two things that were generating revenue for me. One, running my ads and making sure that my ads were working with, whether that was creating new ads, writing new ad copy, looking inside of my ads manager and tweaking some of the ads that I had working or emailing my list, the list of leads that I already had, mailing them offers, mailing them some sort of you know, attractive copy that got them to take a look at some one or more of my offers again and eventually got some of them to buy. Those were the only money making activities in my business. Looking for offers to promote wasn't a, good, wasn't a good use of my time. Sometimes even necessarily pouring through all of the data in all of my campaigns might have not been the best use of my time. It may have even been better in hindsight to have hired somebody sooner who I, who I then gave a list of rules to and said, hey, pull up, you know, if I've had 100 campaigns running, pull up any of my campaigns. I need you to identify the campaigns in advance that are costing you more than X amount of dollars per lead or are generating less than X ROAS. Can you highlight those campaigns for me? Pull out all the relevant data and give it to me in a report on a daily basis or semi-daily basis. Even that would have saved me time, right? But being that I was, you know, a, a solopreneur for for a couple of for a few years and f didn't necessarily feel comfortable hiring people, I wasn't really sure what to hand off. And as a solopreneur, as you may be able to relate, we tend to think that everything has to be done by us. Right? There's, a, there's a saying, I remember hearing this a lot, is uh, if, if it's gonna be done right, it's up to me to do it, right? And that kept me trapped for a long time. So in hindsight, I would have probably started hiring a lot faster than I did making that transition from solopreneur to entrepreneur. All right, so that is principle number one. It's about time to start hiring a team. Let's get into principle number two. So the second tip that we're gonna talk about is kind of boring. I admit it's documentation, okay? And this is gonna go hand in hand with building out a team, right? When you don't have, when you don't have a team and everything is residing up inside of your head and you know how to do everything, great, it's easy because, well, all the documents are in files in your brain. But once you start bringing on a team, once you start handing off some of the work, it's gonna be important that you begin documenting some of the consistent processes in your business. So as an example, if you are a marketer, you might document how you segment an email list, 
right? Basically, how do you do a search and segmentation? I want, if I want to find, you know, the people who are in my list that are more than 60 days old and haven't old opened in 60 days so I can get rid of them or run a re-engagement campaign to them, how do I do that? And so that used to live inside of my brain. And as I started to bring on people, I had to realize that I had to start making documentation about that. There's a great tool. I'll throw this as a, out there as a uh, bonus for you. It's a great tool that we use pretty often in my business called Loom. You can look it up. A very simple tool that allows you to shoot some really simple share screen videos and share them very easily with other users just by providing a link that they can watch. And Loom has made it very easy for us to do document and create SOPs around a lot of the activity in our business. <clears throat> so you'll be documenting, it is about time to start documenting the things that you do in your business regularly and creating processes around them, right? That you do this thing first, then you do this thing second, then you do this thing third, and that sort of thing, right? As you begin to document, if there's any sort of emails that you're writing often, if there uh, or uh, are canned responses that you're dealing with, or any sorts of that thing, like even as, as a matter of fact, when I first started hiring salespeople to work for me, as an affiliate marketer, I used to send you know a lot of traffic, and then through some of that traffic, I'd collect people's phone numbers. And at first, I used to call out to people, and then even at one point, I used to leave my phone number in emails, and people could call me with the hopes of me being able to get on the phone, answer questions, and generate more sales. But once I started to grow my business, I wanted to delegate that sales, those sales conversations out so that I could spend my time on doing the things that I enjoyed doing, right? And so I had to document the script that I used for all of those calls and the flow of that script and how I categorized people after I had a call, right? What buckets did I drop them in into what email campaigns for them to be followed up with? Right? So it's, it's going to be imperative that you begin documenting the regular activity that happens in your business so that you can begin delegating, which was part of tip number one. All right, that is tip number two. Let's dive into tip number three. All right, so this next tip is going to be arguably the most critical of all of these. I would say next to tip number five. So hang with me because tip number five is going to be a big one. All right, so tip number three is tracking. and KPIs, okay? In other words, it's tracking and keeping track of your key performance indicators, the things in your business that are most important and most critical uh, to your business's success. So this is data that is relevant to whether or not your business is going to hit you know, its most important goals. As an example, in my marketing team, and I'm just gonna give you some of the high level KPIs that we look at, we look at the amount of leads generated per day uh, at or below our agreed upon cost per lead, right? I know what I'm willing to pay per lead in my business as an email lead or an email lead submit. Uh, and so I want to make sure that you know, if, if I have a goal to hit X amount of number, I can do some math. I know exactly how many leads I need to create. And we are then focusing on generating a certain amount of leads per day at or below the agreed upon cost of what, what's affordable for us to pay for a lead. Uh, customers or sales per day at or below our cost per acquisition. In, in other words, if my customer is worth $1,000 to me, I'm happily willing to pay up to $500 to acquire a customer, right? I pay $500 to get them, they're worth $1,000. You can do the math, it's pretty simple, right? So if that, as an example, that $500 would be considered our cost per acquisition. It's how much we're willing to pay to acquire a customer. So how many customers are we acquiring every day on a daily basis at or below our agreed upon CPA? These are some of the numbers that I'm watching in my marketing team. Let me give you some, uh, some numbers that I, uh, that I look at inside of our sales team, right? So we'll just get rid of that really quick. I'll pop on over and give you this as an example of sales KPIs. I'll look at average appointment value. So this is the number of appointments, appointments, whoops, divided by, or the, actually let's back that up just one sec, okay. This is revenue 
divided by the number of appointments that were had on the calendar for my sales team. This tells me what every appointment that I put on the calendar is worth. Average call value is another one. This is revenue divided by the number of calls that are completed, right? Just because somebody puts an appointment on the calendar doesn't mean, hey, I hope this isn't too bad, bad news for you, but not 100% of people actually show up for the appointments that they create. And so because of that, we also want to track the revenue that is generated per completed phone call. I'll even track booked call to completed call ratio. Meaning, of all of the appointments that are booked with the sales team, how what percentage of those are actually turn into a completed phone call? The reason that I look at all of this is because if we maintain an average appointment value and I look at every salesperson on the team, basically every salesperson on the team has their own average appointment value. That is a, a way of indicating who is performing best on the sales team. If person X is generating $1,000 per appointment and person Y is only generating $200 per appointment, then basically every time I put a, uh, an appointment on person Y's calendar over a person X's calendar, I didn't make $800, I, the opportunity cost was $200 of a lost potential revenue. So because of that, we make sure that we fill up the highest performing salesperson's calendars first, and it cascades backwards to the person who's performing the least, which may, if they perform too little for too long, may mean that it's not quite a good fit for them. <clears throat> By looking at booked call to completed call close ratio, we're able to tell how well each team member is following up with all of their booked appointments and making sure that those turn into a completed phone call, that they actually get the person to show up for the call, they're actually able to answer all of their questions and have a completed call and a sales session with the person that booked that call. So those are some of the metrics that we look at in sales. Some of the others that we'll look at in operations, we'll look at net promoter score, which measures the customer satisfaction of people coming through our sales sequence. We'll also look at course completion rates. We sell digital courses. That tells us what percentage of people are actually completing the courses that they purchase with the assumption that the more people that complete the course, the happier of a customer you're going to have. So there's many, many more to this. My point is simply this. If you want to scale beyond six figures into the two, the two comma club kind of a mark, right? And add that extra comma to your revenue, it's got to be based on data-driven decision-making, right? You're not going to, I've met lots of people who have tripped, falled, and, and, and slipped and found their way to six figures, but I've not yet met somebody who tripped, fall, fell, and made their way to seven, right? So I would suggest that you get really clear about what tracking and KPIs are important to you and your business. That's tip number three. Let's jump into tip number four. All right, so tip number four is the one that I'm the most afraid to share with you. This is probably where I'm gonna get the boos and the ahs and the people might shut off the video and never watch me again, but it's true whether you like to think of it, like whether you like to hear about it or not. So tip number four is, uh, don't look, don't look, I'm working on it. Legal and accounting, the most boring stuff in the world. Q, the, the, the boo reel and sound effects. I know, I know, I know. Nobody wants to hear about this stuff. People hate it and uh, secretly so do I. But it is absolutely necessary in order for you to get from that mid six, high six figure level to that seven figure level is I would be very sure that you have, and, I, and hey, I've learned this the hard way by the way, but I'd be very sure that you had uh, have good legal representation from a business standpoint uh, and, and look, including all of your business practices, making especially if you start to hire people and put them on on payroll, to make sure that you have that you're following some of the HR guidelines, uh, and that in your marketing and income claims that you may be making in your business or your sales funnels that you are providing the proper disclaimers, refund policies, and making all of those things available to your audience so that you're protected against any legal blowback. It is pretty common, in fact, in pretty much all of the circles that I have that I hang in now, I'm, I'm fairly certain if I think back that every person I talk to have had, has had at some point a run-in with some sort of a legal issue that required legal representation. Whether it was big, small, large, a, a, a partner breakup or whatever it may be is besides the point. 
The point is that it was needed. Second, and this one is probably even more point, more important, is when I talk about accounting, I'm not just talking about like hiring some a company like Bench.co, which by the way, I do use, but that's just gonna look through your numbers and categorize things for you. I'm talking about bringing in somebody on board that can help you figure out the decision-making process around your finances. In other words, what, pro, what numbers can you, or based on what, what the numbers that they're seeing, what can you afford, what can you not afford, what should, you, what should you hold off on, are you paying too much in customer acquisition, are you paying too much in labor costs, fulfillment costs, this, that, and the third. There is apps, I learned this one, this is probably the most painful, look, look at this, it's missing, no, it's missing a letter. Look at that, you don't even have to be smart to make it to multiple eight figures. So anyway, I learned this one the most hard and painful way possible, in that at one point I had a complete moron in charge of basically the bloodstream of the business, right? The, the cash. And so uh, I can't stress this one enough, that it's great, that it's gonna be important that you have somebody on the team that can help you make proper decisions. A lot of business owners that I meet that are in that six figure mark, six figure arena, they're making all their decisions based on how much cash they have in the bank at on, on any given day, which is a pretty poor indicator of where the company is headed financially in the long run. All right, so that's tip number four. I know probably the least favorite tip, so let's get into tip number five. All right, so this next tip is may even arguably be the most important of all the tips that I gave. I think tip number three is pretty critical as well. Really, it'd be a, a toss up between the two, but here we go with tip number five, and that is networking. In other words, it's important that you start getting around other seven figure business owners. All right? If you wanna add the other comma to your revenue, it's gonna be pretty important that you start getting around other people in your industry especially who are already making seven figures or more. In fact, I would share this, that the big, my biggest breakthroughs in, in my history of business have typically come from some sort of a conversation at an event, right? The, what took me from four figures a month in, as an affiliate to five figures a month was literally one conversation, one sentence that somebody said to me during an event in a car ride, and that person was making about 60,000 a month. At the time I was doing like seven or 8,000 a month. That person literally said one thing to me and it shifted all of my thinking. The very next month, I broke through that five figure per month mark and started to, and continued to grow from there. The thing that took me from making multiple six figures per year to seven figures per year was actually partnering on a project with somebody that I had met at a live event. And with our combined efforts, we blew past that seven figure, uh, that seven figure annual revenue and even got as high as seven figures per month uh, while working together. So, again, a lot of the things that have had the biggest impact on my business, its revenue and its bottom line, have been, have been things that have come to me at an event. Whether it was meeting somebody that I kept in touch with, a tip from a high, uh, a high value mastermind from somebody who's already making seven figures, whether it just be a random conversation over dinner, it's getting around other people who already have the results that I wanna have and listening to how they think through the problems in their business, how they think about their business overall. And get this, right? How, if somebody's never been there, how can they show you how to get there? In other words, would you take directions up to the top of Mount Everest from somebody who's never been to the top? I surely hope not. That's a recipe for disaster. But if you were gonna climb Everest for the first time, wouldn't you want to hire somebody who's been to the top 10 times over? Probably. Well, somebody, somebody in your industry who's already in the multi seven figure mark or eight figures a year even, or whatever it might be, they may have, they've been where you wanna go, they can show you how to get there and show you how to skip all of the pitfalls that are standing in the way that you might not even be aware of. In fact, as I'm shooting this video today, I had a conversation this past weekend with a buddy of mine who's in a mastermind with every, with, with, where the majority of the people do nine figures per year. I asked for access to that mastermind because I know that if I wanna grow my business, I've gotta get around the people that are playing the, a bigger game, that are already where it is that I wanna be next, and that can point out my blind spots that I'm not even aware of and help prevent me from hitting them, 
right? So I'm, uh, I'm just giving you the exact same advice that's worked for me. I hope you find this, this video helpful. Somewhere around here, you're gonna see subscribe buttons, you're gonna see like buttons, you're gonna see comment buttons, you're gonna see all sorts of things. Click them, press on them, smash them, just bash them over your forehead if that's what it takes. Uh, <laughs> drop comments in the chat. Let us know, did I go too fast, did I go too slow? What else would you like to learn? Give us some feedback and I look forward to seeing you in another video lesson because again, you will have subscribed to this one. By the way, tip number three, the KPIs and tracking. I have a whole video showing you how to scale to six or even seven figures per month by just using tracking as your key metric to follow, right? Data-driven decision-making. So feel free to watch that video somewhere around here. Click the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll see you in another video. Take care.